imagine. I was a senior in high school headed to work at a fast food restaurant. I was 18 and a big shift manager when I heard prophet leaders say, the Lord can make more of your life than you can. Prior to hearing that phrase, my plan was to follow the store franchiser in his acquirement of many franchise stores, which he did eventually do. But that phrase, the Lord could do more with my life than I could on my own, pierced my heart, and I knew that I needed to do something differently. At that moment, a still, small, yet powerful voice asked me, why don't you let him? Let him, I will, was my response. Within a year of making this lifelong commitment of seeing what the Lord could do with my life, I was called by that same prophet leader to serve in outer Mongolia for two years as a voluntary missionary. Upon my return from serving in outer Mongolia and learning Mongolian for two years, I returned and went to college. Towards the end of my two-year associate's degree, my last year, I ran for student body president. I didn't make it, but I did sit on the presidential board afterwards and helped in the student government. It was a wonderful experience, and I began to see the workings of the Lord in my life. About four years after my return from outer Mongolia, I was working full-time for the university that I would later graduate from. I was engaged, and I was fit, and I drove a nice car. In fact, I thought I was invincible. Here I was, a son of God, had access to his power, and everything was working to my favor. Then I woke up in the state hospital, which is an institution for the mentally ill, having been court ordered there, which was preceded by an arrest for trespassing, which charges were dropped. And my life turned upside down. My car was impounded and sold while I was in the hospital. I broke up with my fiance just before this happened. And I put on 60 pounds in the next nine months. 60 pounds that would haunt me for the next 20 plus years. After I had put on about 60 pounds when I was diagnosed and given medicine for the, a mental disorder called bipolar, I attempted to go back to school and withdrew from school. I didn't have the energy to make it up the stairs to campus, let alone do my schoolwork. So I ended up moving to another city with an old high school buddy and we became roommates for three years. And I searched and I wondered why this had happened to me. This was my greatest fear of being diagnosed with a mental illness. I had seen it in my, my family's lives and I'd seen it in other people's lives and it, it disturbed me. I thought that, that if I had turned my life over to the Lord, such a thing couldn't happen to me, but it did, and that confused me. So for three years, I hunted and looked for the answer. I kept doing what I was supposed to, but I, I stopped dating and I stopped going to school and I worked as a courier and pounded the books one after another, looking for the answer. Why God, what did I do? What, am I cursed? Why would such a thing happen to me? After my three year sabbatical from school and dating, I found the answer. I'd been searching and hunting again for three years to look for the answer of why I had been diagnosed with a mental illness. Why? did I have this mess in my life? And the answer came in a simple sentence that shifted my life forevermore. And this simple answer was, often an invitation to greater consecration comes by means of painful personal experience. And believe you, me, I I was in a painful personal experience. Being diagnosed with my greatest fear of mental illness was extraordinarily painful. Putting on an extra 60 pounds was painful. Not dating was painful. Not being in school was painful. But after I heard that phrase, I knew that it wasn't a curse of what had happened to me. It was actually a blessing. And the fullness of that blessing, I wouldn't understand for 20 more years. Nevertheless, after I had that understanding, I, within months, I was enrolled in school again. And within a year, not only was I a student and working, but I was also engaged and married to the choice daughter. Someone that I wouldn't have dated prior to my experience because I was so full of myself that I couldn't have had the courage to ask someone like her on a date. So there are silver linings in the work of the Lord. I might add gold linings. About 10 years after I was married, we had three little girls and I went off my medicine. I wanted to see if I could do well without the medicine. And it was, it was quite cool, I must say. I trimmed down really rapidly and I had a boatload of energy, but it came with a catch. About a month or two, maybe three months later, I relapsed and was hospitalized again, arrested again, and put back on my medicine. 
Thus, the weight shot up again. About 20 years after my first hospitalization, I was tasered in my front yard, actually on the pavement in front of my house, and arrested and hospitalized again because I had gone off my medicine again. I thought I was so close to the Lord that he would heal me and I wouldn't need the medicine. And I trimmed down again and was hospitalized again and court ordered again to get back on the medicine. Finally, on my third episode, which I'm referencing here, it occurred to me that I need to take medicine and I started taking it again. And this time I ballooned not only 60 pounds more, but within uh, 10 months, I was 88 pounds more than my original high school weight. Uh, at that point, I made a determination that I wanted to trim down. I dreamt of trimming down to my ideal weight again and chose to start changing how I eat. And I lost about 20 pounds in the next year. And that put me at 2022 when I was about 265. The picture of this is in the Instagram feed. And I continued to work on trimming down, just eating differently uh, until uh, November of 2022 when I got stuck at 254 pounds. And for the next six months, I would trim down four to five pounds during the week and gain it back on the weekend. For six months, I did this. I was stuck. And then I started a podcast and a podcast focusing on making Jesus the central focal point of my life. And this creative work got the juices flowing again. And it led me to the 13th of May, 2023, when I had my eyes open and I realized that I had a limiting belief that was holding me back. And the limiting belief was that if I'm going to maintain my sanity, I have to take medicine. Therefore, I must be heavy. And that was shattered when it came clear to me that the Lord said, it's up to me. If I really want to trim down, I need to take ownership of it make that decision and I would have his support. I would have his power to do it. Fast forward from that point on, some 15 weeks later, I'm now from 265 to 217 and my mind is boggled. I tried so many routines, so many of men's methods to trim down and I fluctuated up and down, up and down. But when I turned it over to the Lord, that's when everything changed. I'm still on my medicine and I'm trimming down. 